We're coming to you from Jerusalem with perhaps the most important gate, the Golden Gate, the Eastern Gate, the Messiah's Gate, the Gate Beautiful, the Gate of Mercy. Yeah. Stay with us to find out about your future and this Golden Gate. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. Yes, let us go, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss. And we want to welcome you to our series on the gates, Jerusalem, ancient gates, future glory. It is such a joy to take our viewers around the city of our God. Yeah, we've been walking around the city together and looking into the history, the current events and the future, the prophetic future that the gates speak of. We started with the Dung Gate, which is in the southern end of the old city. We went around to the Zion Gate, to the Jaffa Gate, which is the westernmost gate, and then to the New Gate, Wonderful. to the Damascus Gate, on to Herod's Gate, last week the Lion's Gate, and today we, we finish up with the Golden Gate, also called the Eastern Gate, Messiah's Gate. Uh, it's really got a lot of prophetic meaning in it, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Well, it's one of the oldest gates mm -hmm. that are le left standing yeah. because it was blocked up by the Byzantine. Of course, they built on top of the gate that was underneath it, but you can see it from the Mount of Olives, and it's what Jesus actually came through on His way to bring us His salvation, the sacrifice that He laid down His life for. This has such a wonderful meaning for us, Smiles, because we've been praying from Golden Gate to Golden Gate. Right, right. We live in the San Francisco Bay Area in the Napa Valley area, but we've been praying and standing in California saying that God's revelation will come yes. from that area, from the San Francisco Bay area all the way back to His Golden Gate. Right. Some people think that we are the farthest possible in many ways from the Golden Gate and the Messiah. And so we've been praying that the knowledge of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, as the prophets have said it would. Let's go to our interview with Shimon Gibbs, and he's going to be speaking about Jerusalem. He wrote a book, a great book, about the last days of Jesus, the archaeological evidence. So let's go to Shimon Gibson now in Jerusalem. The Golden Gate is situated on the east side of the Temple Mount. This is known in Arabic as uh, the Haram al-Sharif, the splendid enclosure, and there are some amazing Muslim buildings there today, the Dome of the Rock and the Aqsa Mosque, both which have an antiquity which go back uh, to early Islamic uh, times. But this was the original Temple Mount. This is where the Jewish temple was uh, situated, and this is the area that Jesus came to when he uh, arrived uh, in Jerusalem. The first place he went to, according to the Gospels, is to the temple area. And this was a gate which is now blocked. It dates back to the Byzantine period, but it supplanted an earlier gate, which we know of from uh, uh, the different sources, including uh, later rabbinical sources, which was known as the Shushan Gate. And it was situated exactly on the east side of the temple. Indeed, uh, when the sun came up, and it was, uh, the rays of the sun would then be projected through this gate and then directly uh, onto the facade or the front of the Jewish temple itself. Archaeological excavations have not found the Shushan Gate. There's some arch which was found beneath the Golden Gate. It might be uh, an original gate, but uh, we would need to excavate further there. Now, I'm really interested in all the subterranean areas uh, beneath the Temple Mount. Indeed, I wrote a book with a colleague of mine, David Jacobson, on all of the cisterns and underground conduits and chambers beneath uh, the Temple Mount, some of which are connected to the Golden Gate. Catherine and I walked to the summit of the Temple Mount to see the magnificent Golden Gate for ourselves. If only these stones could speak, what a triumphant choir they'd make, beckoning the coming of the King. 
We are here on the eastern side of the Temple Mount, the famous and oldest gate, the Eastern Gate, the Golden Gate, the Mercy Gate. It has many names, and this is the eighth gate, isn't the it? The eighth gate, the gate that I was talking about that shut up until the King of Glory comes. He's going to come on the Mount of Olives. He's going to touch down his literal soles of his feet. The earth is going to quake and split open. Water's going to gush out, and the throne is going to appear. Yeah. He's going to set himself here, come through this eastern gate, just as he did the first time. He's going to come through this again. You'll notice that this gate is closed, and we're going to talk to you about that in a moment. We're here coming to you from the Golden Gate. It's especially important to us from the San Francisco Bay Area. We, we've been praying Golden Gate to Golden Gate, and we have a T-shirt that says Golden Gate to Golden Gate, opening soon because we know the day is approaching when not the Lord not only does coming. it have one name but it has several names yes. it's known as the mercy gate the eternal gate the beautiful gate this has so much significance because we will see the fulfillment of this gate literally open up the eastern gate for now we're standing in front of a muslim graveyard we're on the muslim area this is a very significant place of spiritual warfare. It's a place where uh, contention is going forth in the heavenlies. But the reality is there is one King of Kings who will open the Golden Gate. We hope you're enjoying our series, Jerusalem, Ancient Gates, Future Glory as we present the historical and spiritual significance of each gate surrounding the old city of Jerusalem. Get this series for yourself or to share with friends. Just call us at 1-800-WONDERS or go to levitt.com and ask for the DVD series, Jerusalem, Ancient Gates, Future Glory. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. We're coming to you from the Golden Gate because of the relationship that Zola Levitt Ministries has with the surrounding neighbors here. We have Muslim friends. We have friends that are able to get us into this place. We're standing in an Arab graveyard on the legal place to stand. We're near the Mount of Olives where Yeshua will touch down, and we're at the Golden Gate that he will come through and establish his throne according to many scriptures, including Ezekiel 44, which says that the prince will rule from the Temple Mount. You know, God says in Psalms 24, verse 7, Lift up ye heads, O ye gates, and lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. God is calling us as believers, both Jews and Christians alike, to lift up our heads and see the redemption that God has only in Himself will He bring peace to this area. You know, He calls this place the joy of the whole earth in the Psalms. Right now, we don't see that. We see conflicts coming in, in, in conflicts of kingdoms in this yes. region, but God Himself will establish what He said, and we agree with Ezekiel Miles that He says He will literally touch down and the soles of His feet, the literal Yeshua Himself will touch down and solve all these issues. You know, the Hebrew says, Viavo Melech HaKavod, the King of Glory shall come in. Amen. And we are all looking forward to that time. You know, when you see the double gates behind me, you recognize that it's called uh, in Hebrew, the, the Sha'ar Rachamim, the gate of mercy. But it's also, the other gate is Sha'ar Teshuvah, the gate of repentance. And historically, there's been both of those senses that this is a place of mercy and a place of repentance. And doesn't it remind you yes. of the scriptures in James where James says that mercy triumphs over judgment, that both are there, but that mercy triumphs because of the goodness of Yeshua at the cross. And we're here looking into the future. We're looking at the past. You know that in 1969, hmm. the American archeologist, James Fleming was walking around this area. He fell through hmm. the ground and discovered below another gate he was shocked because it looked like the gate that might go all the way back to the time of Solomon. In fact, it mirrored the double pillars that are here. 
and he wondered, is this the gate that goes back Absolutely. to the time of Solomon? And before he could do anything about it, the Muslim authorities came and they poured concrete over it. We never found out what's at that lower gate. But the speculation is that this is the place where the lower gate goes all the way through and is here going back to the time when the two pillars stood here, Yachin and Boaz, God establishes and God strengthens. And we're here in that place looking to the future when the King of Glory will set up his kingdom here in a literal place in Jer Jerusalem and rule the earth for a thousand years from this very place. Look up, your yeah. redemption draws nigh. Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zona Levitt Ministries for many years. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. I know you're enjoying this series on the gates because it shows you that God has saved things just for this time to mm. declare who He is to us and to declare who Jerusalem is to Him. It's yes. His precious place. Yes. You know, we love it when you stay in contact with us. You can, you can visit us on our website or uh, like us on Facebook or just email us and ask us for the newsletter and we would love to send this to you. It is so informative about what is happening in the world today. It's articles that are uh, just, just that we've written for and a lot of other people that we use a lot of people to write. Well, we do the sifting for right. folks because there's so much information and disinformation in the world right now that we're able to kind of go through the information that's available, choose the most important relevant articles, put them in our newsletter, and then we have the privilege of writing as well. You always often do a devotional and I'll bring something political and people learn about our family as well. So right. it's, it's a really great newsletter. It's more than just a newsletter. It's really a magazine. You know, the gates are, uh, they speak about a time that's coming, especially this Eastern Gate speaks about a time of redemption. Yes. It's pointing towards redemption. And one of the most amazing signs in the world right now is this coming together almost like a delta point, like a triangle point, uh, an arrow point of uh, Jews and Christians working together. It was phenomenal to us to see that as we've been praying for this to happen, that Amos 9.15 is coming alive in our day. It says that I will plant yes. them on their land. They will never again be plucked up out of the land that I have given to them. The Lord your God has said it. It also says the mountains will drip with sweet wine and all the hills will melt over it. I will mm. restore the captivity of my people. And if you had told me a number of years ago that Orthodox Jewish grape growing folks up on the mountains of Samaria, the heartland of Israel, would be joined by Christians Right. who are helping them to plant, to prune, to harvest the grapes and create this beautiful wine. Uh, for, I, I would have yeah. said it's impossible, but we saw it. In fact, right now we're going to go to my interview with Tommy Waller. He's a Christian pastor who is working with the Orthodox Jewish people in Samaria on the Mount of Blessing, of course, uh, with a ministry called Hayovel or the Jubilee. And together they're looking for Messiah whose identity we know, whose identity will be revealed soon, uh, but they're working together in a way that only God himself Absolutely. could make happen. Let's go to Tommy. We're coming here, uh, bringing volunteers here to, uh, to experience the land, to get our hands in the soil, uh, just like Abraham, just like Isaac and Jacob, and even like uh, Yeshua did uh, when his disciples were here on this mountain. He spoke to the, the woman at the well. And uh, that, that whole story was, this was the theater for that. So we, we are experiencing something, but we're also experiencing the, the, the understanding of prophecy in a different way. One, one is we understood the prophecy of desolation from this place, because you can look around and see that many of the hills here are rocky and they're, uh, there, and you look at this, the soil here, you know, it's, it's very rocky soil. Not many people would come here and say, wow, this looks like great farmland. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, w the phenomena is when the, when the Jewish people came back to the land and they planted, just like the prophet said, just like the scripture says, when they planted themselves back in the land, 
they saw this land from a from a uh, a biblical mandate, a mandate to to restore the land. So they they began bulldozing these rocks around to plant vines, and for the first time in 2,000 years, there's vineyards back in the land of Israel. What, a, what an exciting uh, what, a, what an exciting thing. It reminds me, of course, of Amos chapter 9, yes. where we read about the Jews being planted in the land, never to be taken out again. And you're here with your family, with volunteers who come to actually help that prophecy be fulfilled. It, it goes on to say in Amos 9, it's perfect uh, scripture because Amos 9 says there'll be sweet wine dripping from the mountains of Israel, the same, just the next verse down. And so what a, what a, uh, what a blessing, what, a, uh, what an opportunity for us to see the, uh, the wine come back to the mountains of Israel. And uh, we, uh, there's a, this is a preparation time. This is a, uh, the preparation time for, um, for not just the restoration of the land, but why is the land being restored? Why is there this preparation? Why is there this Elijah John the Baptist preparation thing happening right now. And it's, it is, it's fully to see the one who is coming that's going to sit on the throne in, in Jerusalem. And we're excited about that. And uh, so this, uh, uh, you know, people say, well, why, why vineyards? You know, why, why is that? But um, the uh, Isaiah 25 talks about the, uh, the, 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 the feast that's coming back to this land, the feast, the festival that, uh, uh, where the, the aged wine and the, and the aged beef, you know, are gonna be uh, uh, at the, at the, uh, the festival uh, when, when this restoration happens. But also Yeshua says this, that will not, I will not drink this cup from my father's vineyard mm. until we drink it again in the kingdom. Wow. And that's not gonna be, I'm sorry, Bob, it's not gonna be California wine. <laughs> And uh, it's going to be it's going to be this the the wines from these hills. And uh, what an exciting thing to think that we could be the ones actually, you know, they, I could be the one actually harvesting the cluster that goes into the to the glass. And uh, that's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. What a, what a what an opportunity we have to prepare for the big party that's about to come. <laughs> We had the chance to join some of the volunteers in picking the lush fruit of the vine, and oh, how sweet it was. I talked to Tommy's son, who also feels called of God in this prophetic purpose. Zach, you're here with your dad and your 10 siblings and your children. What's it like to be raising children in the center of Israel in the heartland in Samaria? Uh, it's incredible. Would have never thought in my wildest dreams, you know, five, 10 years ago that I'd be here standing in the land of Israel with my wife and children and my whole family, all my brothers and sisters, mom and dad, even my grandmother's here for this harvest. It's a really incredible thing. And you're seeing prophecy fulfilled. You are walking in the fulfillment of Tanakh prophecies, New Testament prophecies, where this relationship between Gentile believers and the Jews of the land are, it's prospering. Tell us about your process with that. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely been a learning experience, like being here, uh, it's taken nine years to get us where we are today, for sure. Um, there's a lot we didn't know coming into it. We were very ignorant on you know, the, the Jewish people and their the relationship to Christianity and the whole thing. And so it's definitely been a learning experience being here and interacting with the Jewish people. And it's been very good. Um, they say, you know, for 2,000 years, the uh, Jewish and Christian people were talking about each other and not communicating with each other. Right. And uh, so now, for once, you know, we're actually communicating with each other and, and working together and doing things together. And I think that's a big thing. It's a huge thing. And when, when I think about um, the damage that's been done in the name of Christ over the centuries, you guys are really part of the healing. And uh, personally, I want to thank you for that. But also, uh, do, you, do you recognize that, that you're healing something? I think so for sure. I think uh, we've seen a lot of healing. I mean, you know, these guys are the Orthodox Jewish people that have, are very, very strong in what they believe and, and they're the ones who hold most of that wound. Um, and so, and I mean, today, after nine years of working through things and, and figuring out where we're at and where they're at, I mean, we're here working with them and, and talking with them. And so yeah, I, I see it's very healing. Like they're seeing that uh, we're not just coming in and talking, we're actually coming in and doing something 
we're actually coming in to serve and not to you know try to push whatever we have on them in any way and uh, I think that speaks a lot and I think they're seeing that I mean to be out here in the vineyards working a lot of times the vineyard owners will say hey you guys you guys make us you know jealous whatever you're you're actually really excited about these prophecies and different things and that makes me really you know because for them they, they live here you know they, they experience the hardships and and all these things and so for them to see us get excited it kind of renews that excitement in them you know that wow this is where we're at in history and in time it's exciting I think I think there's definitely a healing going on yeah not only so I think that you're living the words from the Holy Spirit through Paul about provoking my people to jealousy that you are the way that you live with your hands in the dirt is provoking the Jewish people to be more godly to, to look look more in the book we're definitely uh, we're not here to try to provoke them by any means, <laughs> but uh, but we're definitely we're definitely here and we definitely are excited, and and when, I think when they see us get excited about their scriptures and their Bible, like when they see us mm -hmm. uh, believing in in the in the prophecies, they say, hey, you know those those prophecies were given to us. We should be just as excited as they are, yeah. and uh, so it's not anything like you know we're we're trying to convince them of anything or anything. We're just doing what we feel like God's called us to do and they're seeing that and, and, and when we all do our part, then everybody can get excited. So here in the heartland of Israel, in Samaria, on Mount Gerizim, new vines have been planted that will grow and become a testimony of God's remarkable handiwork. There's a restoration taking place in the land. Christians and Jews in unity understanding the prophetic implications of what's taking place on this Mount of Blessing. Nir Lavi is the vineyard owner. When, when Christians from all around the world see Hayovel and what it does, and these are good embassies outside of Samaria, outside of Judah, going around the world and saying, Hashem is great, the Jewish people are coming back to their homeland after 2,000 years of exile, planting vines, making wine, and in this process together, we are doing it with uh, honorable Christian people mm -hmm. that have faith in Hashem, mm -hmm. in the Lord. And this is actual prophecies being, being held, being known, and, and, uh, and actually taking, taking place here on Harbacha. Now may the God of who brought up from the dead our Yeshua, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you complete in all you do, as you do his will. And may you who finds his pleasure in you through the blood of his own son. To him be glory, to him be glory forever and ever. Thank you, Marty, for that wonderful music that you contribute to this ministry. And we are so blessed to hear and share in his life and the, and the music that he writes. So, um, But we can't do it without your gifts of funds because all of these things work together. You know, it's one man plants, another man sows, but God brings the increase. So we thank you for sowing into this ministry, for giving the gifts so we can bring the increase that God is bringing in this earth and the revelation that he's talking to us about Israel and the end times. You know, it talks about in Isaiah 62, 10 and 11, go through, go through the gates, prepare the way, my people. The Lord is proclaiming to the end of the world and he is saying to the daughters of Zion, surely salvation is coming. Yes, 
we're seeing it. We just even in that little clip of Tommy Waller and what's happening with the Jews and Christians in the mountains of Samaria, it really ties into the Eastern Gate because right. we're looking towards that final gate when right. when God Himself, when Mashiach is going to come through that gate and establish the millennial reign from Jerusalem, reigning over the whole earth for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And what we do here is connected to awakening our country, awakening Israel, awakening the world to the, to the importance of the time in which we're living. Absolutely. You, you, and awakening the daughters of Zion, you know, they've come to us, they've said, thank you for your show, yes. thank you for what you're doing, we know it's making a difference. These are people that aren't yet believers, these are Jewish people, storekeepers, uh, that have come and said, thank you for what your, yeah. your show is saying to us yeah. and to the world. And so we want to share that thank you to you yes. for you that have given to this ministry. We want to say thank you. And if you've ever thought about it, please, would you just send a little something our way and we'll make sure to give the glory to God and let the message continue. Yeah, the message is what it's about. This is about lifting up the King of glory yes. and, and letting people know that He is what this is all about. Thinking about Psalm 24, verse 7, I love this. And it really ties up this whole teaching about the gates of Jerusalem. Se'u sharim rashei chem v'pitchei olam v'yavo melech hakavod. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors that the King of glory might come in. And that's what we're looking at. Zechariah said Messiah is going to come back on the Mount right. of Olives. And Ezekiel said he's going to come in through the Eastern Gate. And all those prophets prophecies, those prophets, they saw something, right. God put it in a book, and so we get to open it and believe it right. and look forward to the coming of Messiah. Yes. And how amazing is it that Jewish people are looking for a Messiah, yes. the Christians are looking for Jesus, and at some point they are both going to find right. out that he is the one. He is the one, and Messiah is coming again. And so it's our job to continue right. to awaken people right. to this reality, yeah. and we get to do it with... Yeah, Christianity through Jewish eyes. You know, we love bringing you this perspective. We know there are other people out there that are doing it, but we know that we need it more than ever. Yeah, especially as we see the onslaught of okay. anti-Israelism, anti-Zionism, anti-Semitism at work in the world. Uh, we're just going to continue to bring this message until the day approaches. Yeah. So, until we see you again, we always want to remind you, Sha'alu, Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. Let us go on, let us go on to the gates of Jerusalem, the gates of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.